being invited to come and speak because it gave me an opportunity to return to a place where I spent 16 years with just wonderful people. And so I'm grateful for all of you to step out on this beautifully rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just going to say thank you, God, for my 16 years in New Jersey, my spiritual growth and walk with Our Lady of the Mount Parish. Thank you for all of you gathered here tonight whose paths have intersected with mine or have just come to think about miracles. I ask you, Our Lady, to guide us in our time together, to leave our worries, our concerns, our stresses, our obligations, all the things that occupy our minds outside this space and fill this room with peace and rest. In the name of your son, we pray. Um, just to let you know how I met Mary Duhame, I met her in 2008 while I was on a sabbatical from St. James School in a time of just discovery, and I started the journey through the Bible. It was my very first Bible study at St. James, and she asked me if I wanted to participate in a faith sharing room, and I was very skeptical. And I the heck is faith sharing. And it took me about six weeks to decide that yes. And I have walked with these faith sharing sisters through trials, tribulations, sorrows, and joys. And it is an amazing group of women. So I know Mary is going to speak in September about faith sharing. So please come in September. Um, tonight's talk is about God's miracle kisses from heaven. Over the years, I have written in roughly 20 journals, noting the various instances, synchronicities, and movements of God. I clearly see the extraordinary way he has intervened. So tonight I will share some personal revelations, visions, and miracles as a witness of our faith, which has stirred in unexpected and surprising ways. Um, I was and am a work in progress. I met my husband in Fire Island, uh, New York, when my life was full of change. In my late 20s, I had a lung collapse and um, a malpractice settlement because it was misdiagnosed and I was in between jobs so I didn't have insurance. So I unfortunately had to have a malpractice suit. Um, but what happened during that time period was a time of working with kids and doing art and creative projects and then created a, I began to embark on a different career. Um, but it was a pilgrimage to Medjugorje in 1991 that rocked my world and altered my course. The apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary in this rural farming community, which is in Bosnia, Herzegovina, have begun in 1981, and these visitations are still occurring today. She leaves messages for the world, and how extraordinary is it that our Blessed Mother, our Heavenly Mom, is guiding us and teaching us her children. I want to share just portions of a couple of her messages. Um, one is from October 2013. Dear children, today I call you to open yourselves to prayer. Prayer works miracles in you and through you. And then one from September 2008. Dear children, today with my motherly heart, I call you gathered around me to love your neighbor. My children, stop. Look in the eyes of your brother and see Jesus, my son. If you see joy, rejoice with him. If there is pain in the eyes of your brother, with your tenderness and goodness, cast it away. Because without love, you are lost. Only love is effective. It works miracles. So what we just heard is that prayer works miracles and love works miracles. Out of the love between a mother, my mother, 
and son, my brother, my world was rocked. In 1991, my brother Paul was dying of AIDS, and my mom got on her knees and begged God for help. A friend suggested Medjugorje because she had recently been to a talk. She asked my brother Paul to consider this, and he said yes. So mom, my brother's partner, Ed, and I went to a country on the brink of a civil war. Prior to this, I went to church on Sundays, but I did not feel real connected to my faith. This trip, a miracle mission, shook my faith. Recently, I was at a talk by Sister Bridge McKenna and bought this book, um, Miracles Do Happen. And what she talked about was giving God our greatest problem. Let it go, accept his will for us. It is probably something that we don't want to experience, but when we trust, abandon and get out of the way, putting him first, we will see miracles. She said it took her a long time to do this, but when she did, wow. Um, you know, and what, at the end of the talk, I have a resource list that has this book and its name, so some of the things that I talk about, you'll get, um, you know, so you can investigate further. So on the trip with my brother, who was so sick, I tried my best to adapt an attitude of surrender and trust. And in reality, we have no control except for our choices, to pray with the heart and to believe in our faith. What I experienced as I learned through trial and errors were miracles. Have you ever been totally overwhelmed? You did not know what to do. Every cell in your body was squirming, your mind racing. On my first night in Medjugorje, with immature faith and a grave situation, after mass, we moved outside, and I panicked in the reality of what could happen to my brother Paul. It struck my gut. In the seating around the outdoor altar, he was getting sick to his stomach, and my mom was nursing him. I freaked out, and out of desperation, I started to run. I sprinted into the back of the church, and at that time it was very rural, so there were vineyards, and I was sprinting and running as fast as I could. And then I thought of this impending war and my own safety, but I was so upset, and in a blink of an eye, I was cradled in huge hands, and I could see the wrinkles and the fingers. I was in these huge hands, and I heard, my mother has brought you here. In an instant, it was like an imaginary syringe, instantly removed my fear and replaced it with calm and just profound love. This was just the beginning. From Psalm 95, on that day, on that day you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. And Isaiah 43, 5, fear not, I am with you. Over the next week, as transformation was occurring, in my soul, and Our Lady worked with my brother, I saw the sun actually fall from the sky, so much so that my brother and I linked arms, we were outside around the altar in the back of the church, and leaned back, like, oh my God, it's falling towards us, then it went back up in the sky, it spun to the left, it spun to the right, and we saw flares of incredible colors coming out. And this was, I had heard about the falling of the sun and the miracle of the sun in Fatima was my first experience. We all, also witnessed utter silence, almost like the bewitched show. 
um, on top of Apparition Hill where we were invited to go for an apparition at 10 o'clock in the evening. And as we got to the top of the mountain with flashlights, there was a lot of noise, there were rocks, there were dogs barking, babies crying. And all of a sudden, when the Blessed Mother appeared to Yvonne's prayer group, it was like a blanket of love just poured over the entire mountain and everything was gone. Every single sound was utter silence. And then it came back again and everybody poured down the mountain. And prior to the ap actual apparition, there were more languages than I could count saying the rosary together in just this beautiful symphony of prayer. It was gorgeous. Um, I also saw my brother go through an actual transfiguration. On the bottom, my mom, in those days, AIDS was, um, my mom couldn't say AIDS. So my mom told everyone my brother had cancer. And at the bottom of Cross Mountain that we were going to climb up, she, he said to me, please tell everyone the truth, that I have AIDS. So there were nine people in our pilgrimage group, so as we climbed the mountain, I told each one that he had AIDS, and they told me why they had come to the mountain, and, um, or why they were in Medjugorje. And by the seventh station, he, everyone knew, so the truth will set you free, and he did a meditation reading, and he turned around to me and he said, I am not afraid to die, and I am being helped. And at that moment, all the stress, just the lines went away from his face, his face looked so clear, his eyes bright, it was incredible. And from the rest of our trip, he was able to sing, link hands. He was only 39 years old and he had a cane, um, but he didn't need the cane anymore. It was, it was truly miraculous. Um, I also saw the healing power of confession because my mom was insistent as an earthly mother is with her child <laughs> and why he's there to go to confession. And I told her I didn't need it, Mom. I'm only here for Paul, but I got in line too. <laughs> Those moms. Um, and so Paul went in Medjugorje, and then he continued back at his home in Miami. And um, we, we lost Paul a month after we got back from our miracle mission trip. Um, but... You know, Mom wanted an earthly miracle, but she got an eternal one. And one night I was, I was, um, you know, I oftentimes go to sleep with a rosary in my hand and pray, and I just kept seeing the word, I believe, I believe. So I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life after la everlasting, amen, and I believe. Um, Our Lady took me by the hand in this place where heaven meets earth in what is referred to as her school of prayer and began to show me the road map to heaven and the power of the rosary. There are profound healings, conversion stories, fruits that have come from the events in the rural farming community and continue today. You can learn more on the web and I'm going to just give a little plug for Mary TV, and I put that on my resource list. I gave a witness talk there in 2017 when I was there, and it's number 301. <laughs> um, right now there are 352 conversion stories, and in my 10-hour drive from Florida to Fredericksburg, Virginia, I just tuned in and listened to several, and they are mind-blowing. Um, I heard when on my drive about a woman who watched a woman who had been blind. She went blind at eight years old and she regained her sight. And this particular pilgrim saw that happen. Um, so an awesome kiss from heaven, a little miracle, came. Um, my brother passed away in 1991. My daughter was born in 1993. 
and in 1997 she was four years old and we were living in Connecticut and it was freezing cold and we'd taken my husband to the airport and she was in her footy pajamas and I was teaching in her preschool and I had to get construction paper. So we went by the school and I left the car running. I ran inside to get the construction paper. I came back out to the car, opened the door and she said, Uncle Paul is so nice. And I said, did you see him? And she goes, no, he just talked to me in my brain. And he said I, that he works for God. And that if I ever need anything, Mommy, I can just talk to Uncle Paul. And you, we all need someone who's died that we can talk to. Now, who could you talk to? You should talk to your Aunt Ruth, because you talk about her a lot. And who could Daddy talk to? And she went on and on, and I didn't ask her more questions about Uncle Paul, except to run home, get on the phone, and go, Mom, he works for God. <laughs> Um, God's plan is greater, Jeremiah 29. For I know well the plans I have in mind for you, plans for your welfare, not for woe, so as to give you a future of hope. In 2003, I lost my dad um, uh, after an extended decline, and I held his hand when he passed. We had all been around him, and as his breathing changed and I was holding his hand, I saw a woman in my mind's eye, I don't really know how this works, but in my mind's eye, I saw a woman in a sepia photograph sitting on a chair saying, come on home, Bobby, come on home, and I believe that to be his mom. Um, a short time after, and my, my parents lived in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and a short time after, I was here in church before Mass began with my head bowed in prayer, and all of a sudden, I saw my father sitting on a park bench, and he was sitting next to my brother Paul, and my father always gave us something called the Dutch rub, it was, you know, he just rubbed the top of our heads. So he had his arm around my brother, rubbing his head, and then he looked me right in the eye and said, Barbie, can you believe I'm here with him? <laughs> it was like, woo! So another phone call to my mother, guess what? <laughs> um, in my daughter's eighth grade year at St. James, I was on a sabbatical, and I went through a period of wanting to say yes to God Projects. So I was invited to join a woman on an Anna Maria Schmidt retreat. Wow. I had not been on many retreats, so this would be relatively new to me. When she was speaking, teaching us, showering us with her devout faith, miracle stories abounded regarding her charismatic upbringing in Czechoslovakia the Nazi invasions, and how God was with her in the concentration camps, I was in awe. And she had incredible joy. She had requested a simple gift, a sign of spring, and she'd mentioned that to us. Well, at one point I was walking the grounds of the retreat, and in front of the room outside of the window where she was staying, was a hot pink azalea. So I saw that and was like, okay, I'm looking for buds. I'm going around and I'm looking for more growth in spring. Nothing, nothing. It was chilly and it was, um, it was spring, but it was chilly in Massachusetts. Clearly an amazing kiss from God. And right now, Anna Maria Schmidt is very, very sick. She's probably at the tail end of her life. She lost her whole family during you know the horrible siege of the Nazis and um, so keep her in your prayers and I there is a CD about her life um, with Lighthouse Media so I have put that on my list um, for you to refer to if you want to read about her um, another kiss crazy kiss um, someone in my faith sharing group my wonderful faith sharing group said Pray for your children 
to meet holy people in college. It's like, love that. I'm worried sick. I'm, this is great. Okay, I'm on a mission. I will pray my rosaries, holy people. My daughter met Anne. Anne went on vacation with us to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And I learned of her grandfather's miracle trip to Medjugorje. He um, arrived in Medjugorje to pray for his son who was losing his sight. And during the course of his time in Medjugorje, he was prayed over. And when someone went to pray over him, instead of him falling and being resting in the spirit, the person who was praying over him fell and said that he saw Anne's grandfather with a Roman collar on. So when this man shared this with Anne's dad, she, you know, he said, I'm a grandfather, I'm a father, I'm married. How can this be? Well, he took it to heart, prayed a lot, became a deacon, and then he became a Roman Catholic, a Ukrainian Catholic priest and resides in Conyers, Georgia, near the grounds where the Blessed Mother had appeared in Conyers, Georgia. So when I, uh, we brought my daughter, or we arrived back from vacation and her parents came to pick her up, this paint, this was the gift this little picture that I put on your chairs was the gift that they gave us for taking, taking their daughter on vacation with us. Um, and, you know, for me, it's my motto, just have faith in my son, Jesus. And that's what Mary does in Medjugorje. She's leading us to her son and to have faith. Um, Anne's uh, grandfather also has a first-class relic, a robe of Padre Pio, that he prayed with me and put this robe over my hands, and I prayed with he and his wife, and I felt tremendous heat on my hands and my legs where this Medjugorje, or where this Padre Pio robe rested, beyond science and understanding. Um, my, my stepson, Matthew, uh, while living, he was living in Atlanta with his wife and four-year-old son. Actually, we were on this vacation in the Outer Banks when we noticed a lump on his arm. And he said to his dad, um, I've already had a biopsy on my arm. And while we were there, we got a call that it was nothing. And, okay, good. Well, it... Um, proceeded to get worse and he was having trouble moving his hand and he was diagnosed with rabo, rhabdomyosarcoma uh, cancer. And at the same time Matthew was diagnosed, Father Sean had asked me about planning a pilgrimage to Medjugorje. So I was in the throes of planning a pilgrimage to Medjugorje and in the back of my mind I'm thinking this is kind of crazy. My mom went to Medjugorje to pray for my brother Paul, and here I am, and I am probably going to be praying like crazy for, for Matthew, um, trying to see if I could get him to come, but that was fleeting. He always used to say to me, Barbara, I don't have your faith. Um, so during the uh, Medjugorje pilgrimage in uh, 2014, um, you know, all of it is extraordinary. Every time I go, there's a new experience. But um, we went to see the visionary Visca, and there were hundreds of us outside, and she was telling us the whole, her story and her witness and what the Blessed Mother is trying to teach us all. And she was, uh, then she said, I'm going to pray over you. I don't know how long it will be. And she put her hands and extended her hands, and. I was actually standing next to Mary Duhame, and we both felt this breeze. My eyes were closed, and all of a sudden, again in my mind's eye, the Blessed Mother was standing right in front of me. And in her arms, she was holding my stepson. Mm -hmm. And his arm was dangling, which was not 
very pleasing to me, the way that he looked. She never looked to me in the eyes. She kept looking down at him. But as I was there, coming up next to me was Matthew's wife, Lauren, their little son, Luke. My husband came up next to me, my daughter, um, Lauren's parents, and more people, my parents, everybody that I knew was gathering around. And I was um, directed to look behind. So I turned around and I looked back and there were more people than I could, I could see. And what I understood, no words were spoken, but what I understood was these are all the people praying for your son. We, you know, he's on so many prayer chains and it was extraordinary. And you just think about that when we ask someone, you know, for prayers and we extend it out, how, you know, that pocket of prayer. So that was pretty amazing. Um, also, we stayed with um, the visionary Yvonne and Yvonne at that time was receiving daily apparitions of Our Lady. So we got to stay at his guest house and we were invited to go to be in the chapel when he has an apparition. So one particular night I was there, he had an apparition and in the basket we were all putting all of our prayer intentions in a basket on the altar there and I had a picture of Matthew and his wife Lauren and their little son Luke. And I always would tweak it so that I could look at them when I was in there praying. Well, I saw another vision. And this time it was with Jesus. And I was at Matthew's feet. And Matthew was not laying on a bed, but he was laying on a hard surface. And um, Jesus had his arm around Matthew's shoulders. And he kissed him on the arm. And he looked at me with these incredible brown eyes. And no words, but looked at me with the message, I got him. It's going to be okay. So wasn't sure how this was going to play out with these two visions. Um, when we returned, from Medjugorje, I was one day praying in our chapel across the street, and um, I was by myself, and Father Bill had stopped in and asked me to say some prayers for someone, and I thought, you know, I, I, yes, absolutely, so I was doing the Stations of the Cross, just walking by each one and saying some prayers, and when I got to the last Station of the Cross, when Jesus is laid in the tomb, the image that is on, and I've only seen it in our chapel, was what Matthew was laying on. That was the wood. That was the, where, where Jesus is laid in the tomb. Now my mat's alive and in, in Atlanta, going through chemo treatments, um, but all of this was happening, and I pondered it in my heart, because this was not, these were not things I could really share time. Proverbs 3, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. Do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Um, during this pilgrimage, there was a book that we wanted to buy, and we couldn't get the book. And so we gave money to our tour director, and she said, I'll buy them, and then I'll send them to someone.
was working, yeah. just stopped. Yeah. Okay.